Hi everyone, I'm Eileen Hall and I am here today to share with you how to cut a double mat. Um, this video is being sponsored by Logan Graphic Products. This is a company that I've worked with for probably at least 10 years um, professionally and then before that I used their products. So uh, I just wanted to share how much I loved what they make. Hi Catherine. Um, so what I thought I would do is just uh, tell you a little bit while we're waiting for people to come on about how I started uh, working with their products and that is that I was doing um, stitching. So when we first got married um, we didn't have a lot of money. I was making little wedding samplers, um, baby samplers, and then I would mat and frame them over at the craft shop that was on post because we were in the military. So what happened was I started getting these piles of mat board that uh, collected and I loved them and I couldn't get rid of them. Hi everybody. Uh, so anyway, I wound up with a pile of mat board and so then I just started cutting mats. Um, I was using the, the equipment on post, but then we moved off post and I didn't have one. So I went and bought one. I did a little research, found what uh, fit me. And that is something, if you're looking at getting a mat cutter, that's something you'd wanna look at. What are you gonna use it for? Yes, I know, Charlotta, it's exciting. Mat board magic, you wanna see it? <laughs> We're gonna make some magic today. Let me show you, um, Let's see, let me turn this around and just show you what we're gonna make. Um, let's see. All right, I gotta unplug here. I didn't wanna get, um, lose my charge. But here is the mat that we're gonna cut today. This is double mat. And I wanna show you how easy it is. You just need a little calculating. But actually, uh, Logan has an app so they can, you just plug in the numbers to the app and that will do the work for you. So really there's a lot that uh, you don't have to worry with. So uh, I wanna just show you some of the equipment that you're gonna use if you wanna cut a mat. Uh, and I'm gonna turn the camera around. Uh, this is the mat cutter that I'm using today. Now you don't need anything this fancy, but um, I had a relationship with Logan and they sent me this because I was going to write a book for a company and then the book deal went and they said, oh, just keep it. So see, it's, it's coming in handy. Here we go. So this is a big one. This is so that you can cut like a, a 40 inch piece of mat board. You probably don't need that if you're um, going to be cutting, maybe, you know, framing some photos or uh, you just have to think about what you'd use it for. Um, here's what comes in the box and I'll show you the mat cutter itself in a minute. Um, this here, you get a bevel cutter, straight cutter, stops and blocks, and I'll show you what those are in a minute. You get an instructional DVD, you get how to set it up. Um, it would be great if you wanna go over and like Logan Graphic Products on Facebook. And then you get a book on how to, um, uh, how to mat and frame pictures. So it comes with all that stuff. Uh, now this, <laughs> here are the books that I wrote. Um, Logan also has some foam, foam board cutting tools. This is the first book that I did. And I still like these. Let me just go through and show you a couple of the projects because it was when my son was getting married. Oh, there's a little snowman made him out of mat board. These are some things that I matted. Uh, this here is a wedding cake made out of mat board. I mean, I just love this stuff. It's good. <laughs> um, here's a little collage I made. That was my granddaughter when she was little. These are some boxes that I made. And the beauty of mat board is that it comes in a big sheet. So you can lay that out on your mat cutter and kind of score it and make larger products, projects, you know, like how we do on the mat cutter or on the Sizzix machine, which is the other company that um, I work with and you know, I like to cut stuff. <laughs> so, uh, but you're limited with that because it has to be a certain size. So when you're, you have a mat cutter, um, you have a little more leeway on size here. Okay, here's some of these. 
This is like a little box I made, like a wedding organizer, and that was just the prettiest pro project because that is uh, an embossed mat board, which actually you can kind of get that effect with your embossing folders. But here is, uh, it's like a 3D matted uh, wedding sampler. So I, I just had a great time working with their products. This is uh, something I made for my mom, a little jewelry, jewelry box. And anyway, these are just some things that can be done with it. And then here's another book because they have a whole set of foam board cutting tools that were brand new. So this book was uh, to kind of show all the things that you could do three-dimensionally with uh, mat board this was or foam board this was fun this I made a little dollhouse out of it so th the tools that they have are just amazing like they work forever the one mat cutter that I usually use um, I've I bought it in 1995 and I'm still using it so um, these were horrible photos I apologize but anyway <laughs> This was uh, early on in my career. This was like in, well, 2008. I wrote both of these books. So uh, that was fun. And this here is the equipment that you would use if you wanted to cut a double mat. And I just want to go through some of this stuff and talk a little bit about what it is because it looks a little scary here. <laughs> but you don't have to be afraid. Okay, all this does, it's a tool, and it helps you to make nice straight cuts. I even use it to cut my gift wrap. Uh, you know, once you get the hang of it, you will love it. Especially if you like Sizzix, you're going to like this. You know, it's, it's a precision tool that you can use for whatever you need. Hey, Paul. Hi, Anne. Hi, Charlotta and Julia. Good to see you guys. So, um... Another tool that we're going to need, and these all come with the cutter. This is a straight cutter, so I'll show you how to use that. But basically what that does is when you buy a sheet of mat board, as you can see down there, it comes in a large sheet, so you're going to need to cut it down to the size that you need. So that's what this straight cutter does. This one here is a bevel cutter. That cuts it at a 45 degree angle. So you get those nice uh, cuts Let me here, like this. Oops. So you get these nice bevels on the edge here, you know, and then, um, so let's, let's go over here and let's kind of get started. Let me put the phone up and let me get my iPad going so I can see, make sure that you can see in the frame and then we'll get going on cutting a mat. So, um, as I said before, you want to, when you're looking at a mat cutter, you want to make sure that you're using something. You don't want to buy a super duper large mat cutter that you have to store and, um, you know, you may not use it. You want to get the best use out of it. So if you want to, oops, I see that I didn't turn this around. So I'm glad I looked at my iPad. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, you can get smaller versions of this and they're less expensive. Um, I don't know. Now, Brian from Logan, I think, I hope, is in the chat. So if you have any questions, you can ask Brian. And also, if you have any questions about Chicago hot dogs, you can ask Brian because we've had many conversations about that. I uh, helped out at a couple trade shows for them and he, he's the one that told me, um, in Chicago, you may not have ketchup on a hot dog. They will not serve you ketchup on a hot dog. <laughs> I did not know this. So uh, <laughs> Brian is a font of wisdom. So um, just, you know, go ahead and ask him if you have any questions in there. All right. So I see, let's see here. I don't know. Is this, um, are we on? Let's see. Okay, there we go. All right, I started out on that one and moved up to the next larger. Also have their circle cutter. Oh, you do matting and framing for a job. Nancy, what a fun job. Um, I use it for personal things. Like, let me just show you. You know, I said everything looks better with a mat. 
Um, let me just get something. This is something that my daughter did for me, this paper cutting here. Uh, she gave it to me a couple Christmases ago, and I just loved it. But it was a piece of paper, you know, it was just a piece of paper. So I just took white matting and I matched the paper, the white paper. I put it on the mat board backing, the color that I wanted, and I keep that here in the kitchen. So I did it just, or that may even be paper behind it. I used a little uh, spray adhesive. I put my paper down that she had cut and then I double matted it. And it's just beautiful. It just brings out the beauty, I think, in, in a lot of art that otherwise you might not notice. So um, thank you, Jessica. That's my daughter that made that for me. <laughs> so um, having that job would be fun, I think. You get to see all kinds of beautiful artwork coming through. Uh, yes, you could use it for your photos. Yes, Charlotta. Charlotta's a photographer. She, you would love this. Um, so yeah, and <laughs> Jenny Marples, plain wrong, no ketchup. <laughs> okay, Brian, are you there? I don't see you. You can just come in anytime. <laughs> okay, so though these, these are the two cutters that you're going to use when you're cutting mats. The other thing you're going to need is an ATG gun. You don't need it, but it really helps. This one I've had a very long time. It's got a lot of problems with it. I had to tape it together, but this is double-sided tape that come, is dispensed in a gun, and it's really handy to have. You want to have a pencil, a ruler, and you want to have your artwork. And then what I do is I just sketch out my dimensions before I start. Now, like I said, Logan has an app, so you don't have to even think about the math involved. But just let me go over it so you can kind of get in your head uh, how it works. All right, so we know we have this Noel, Noel uh, artwork. So I said, yeah, I think I want to have six inches, um, you know, that I want to have the window be to fit my artwork in. Then I decide I want a double mat. I want to have white on the outside and I want just a little pop of red on the inside. Okay, the frame that I'm working in is 12 by 12. So I wrote down 12 by 12. That's my outer dimensions. And it turns out if I have 6 minus 12, that's 6. So I subtract 6. Now squares are really easy because all of your dimensions are the same and that's why I started with a square. Uh, just because they're easy, you don't have to adjust anything. Um, and so then you know six inches, you have six inches left. So you want three on this side, three on that side, right? So then, so you're dividing that by two, which leaves three inches. So the first, you want your inner mat to be three inches. And then if you want to leave about a quarter of an inch here, you're going to measure this one at two and three quarters. So let's just start and you'll see how it goes as we start doing the project. Now the first thing that we need to do is to cut it down to size, okay? So let me just raise this up a little bit here. I think that might help because it gets big. Uh, the other thing that I should say is you probably want to have a little room to work with, a little elbow room, which is why I'm in my kitchen and not in my basement because uh, I've got some piles going down there. So um, you want to have a little room to work in. So the first one I want to cut down is my whiteboard. That's going to be the 12 by 12 size. Okay. So I'm going to take it and first I'm going to cut it this way. So I have 12 inches. So what we're going to do, and I'm not sure you can see this, but there are things called stops. You don't have to use them. They're kind of handy if you're doing a lot of repeating, but you're just going to line this up where it says 12. I'm not sure. I think that's getting cut off, but I'm going to take my straight cutter and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do a 12 inch cut. All right. Oops. Something just fell. All right, so now I have a 12 inch piece going this way. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to cut another piece that's 12 inches. Now, one thing you want to think about when you buy mat board, there's a right and wrong side. 
This is, you usually want to cut on the back side so that if something happens, it gets dirty, your front is not um, gotten messed up, which I didn't do. So <laughs> sorry about that. Um, it's hard to tell when you're cutting white because you wouldn't believe how many shades of white there are. <laughs> so I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to line it up again on the 12. And I'm going to cut that down. Now this one has a really cool spring, so it it won't cut you, you know, if you happen to hit that there. So you're just going to cut that down. All right. Now you have a 12 by 12 inch piece of mat board. Now we're going to cut the red. Um, this one is a little bigger. Now, oops. The second mat is going to be cut down smaller. So we're just going to do it a half an inch smaller, which means we want 11 and a half. Now line that up, cut, cut. Whoops, I'm gonna go over here so I don't, it's very hard to film this. I was hoping my friend Susie could come and help, but uh, I think she's in Florida, so I'm just doing this solo, but I hope you can get the idea of it. All right, so we cut, that's 11 and a half. Now we're gonna do another 11 and a half. All right, everybody with me so far? So we have our two colors, white and red. I'm just gonna move those. All right, here's our white, that's gonna be our outer one, and here's our red, which is gonna go inside, okay? Um, there's also another little gadget, which I couldn't find, but if you um, have any marks on your mat board, you rub it on there and it, it's like a little sandbag almost. Okay, so here is the right side. We want to turn that over because we're going to do all our work on the back. Now, when you're cutting your first mat, you need this piece here under it, which supports your cut. It's called a slip sheet. So I'm going to put that in here. Oh, actually, let's measure it first. And I've got to put my stops back on. So these are a nice way to help you um, mark where you want your cuts to be. And there's a guide over here. So can you guys see that? Can everybody see okay? Let me just adjust here. Uh, sorry. All right, I was not moved over the right way. Is that better? Okay. All right, so this here is what I'm talking about. This is gonna help us to mark off where we want to do that. All right. So the first one we're gonna do, we said was two and three quarters, and you always wanna measure twice, cut once, <laughs> woodworking and in mat cutting. And so we decided that we're gonna cut two and three quarters for our white mat. So I'm gonna come over here. Here's three. We're just gonna go down to the two and three quarters. And I'm gonna just screw that down so it doesn't move. I'm gonna lay my mat board in so it's square, you know, square here, square there. And I'm just gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna mark down all four sides. These are gonna be the guides so I know where I'm gonna cut. I don't need my slip sheet now because I'm not cutting. Sorry, this cord is driving me crazy, put it around my neck. <laughs> okay, now we have our two and three quarters measured out. Now we're gonna put our slip um, sheet inside here and we're going to cut. We know that this is two and three quarters, that's where we want it. So we're gonna lay this down, make sure our edges are straight. We're gonna take our bevel cutter, that's this one, and it's gonna go like this. The blade is in here and what we're gonna do is line this line up here and here. That's where we want to start the cut and end the cut, right? And there's a little track, you can see, you just set your blade there and you adjust this right on the line. You press down and pull it towards you until you hit this line right here. And then you let it come up, all right? And then 
Let's look. See, you've got a little cut. So now you're going to turn it a quarter of the way around. We're going to do it again. And so all of these cuts are going to line up and they're going to be just perfect, hopefully. <laughs> I don't know. With everyone watching, they probably won't be. All right, so I'm going to do this again. Pull down and towards you. When you get down towards this, you just kind of want to slow down a little so you don't go crazy there and go off track. And so we know that this edge is good because it's already coming out. I'm going to set that in and every time you want to just nudge it in there and make sure everything is all where it's supposed to be. And so all you do, you just follow the cutting all around your square. And this will be our last one. All right, then we're going to have our white mat all cut. Now, sometimes you might get an overcut. It depends on the depth of the mat that you're cutting. They're all kind of um, not the same thickness. So, you know, you may have to work with that a little bit. All right, now the next thing that I'm going to do, and this looks a little weird, but it's going to turn out fine. I'm going to put my blade, my, uh, what do you call that thing, arm up. And this is the next color that I want to have. So I'm going to turn that over because you always want to cut on the back. I'm going to put some tape around here. And that is going to attach the red mat. I don't know what that was that just came off. Maybe my sweater? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and I'm going to just, I should lay this down flat, but I didn't do it. <laughs> and then we want to put something in the window here too. So the, all of these pieces stick together. All right, now we're going to take our red sheet and we're just going to kind of center that and press down. And now when we cut our second mat, we don't need the slip sheet because it's already pretty stabilized. But now what we're going to do is we're going to change our dimension to three because we said we want a three inch uh, mat going around the edge. So it all comes out to six total. So we're going to take this and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go around, trace these. And if these are a little off and they're not perfectly, you know, in the center, that's, that's all right. Don't worry about it. That's the back. No one's going to see. How's everybody doing here? Looks like you're doing all right. All right. Now we have all of our things trace. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to just take our bevel blade and set that in the track and we're going to cut another one. Okay. All right. We're going to rotate. And wait until you see this. You want to make sure you go right to the line. And you can, I mean, once you do it a while, you can cut multiple openings. You can do shadow boxes. I mean, everything looks better in a mat. I'm not kidding. Whatever it is, a piece of paper, you know, a little note that your son or daughter wrote for you, you know. Okay, here we go. Perfect double mat. Wasn't that easy? All right, I have to look and see what you're saying. <laughs> what is the name of the Logan app to download it? Um, Linda, I would go on Logan Graphic Products Facebook page, and I think that's where I saw the name of the app, uh, and I just took it and put it on my phone. It's great, it works fine. Um, yes, it is so much easier, and you know what? If you went to Michael's and went to have them cut this for you, it would be, I don't know. I mean, I just don't do it because I know I have the tools here. So um, it is so simple. You saw, I mean, after you do a couple, you would, you really kind of, it becomes second nature, but uh, it's, it is just so, so easy. I feel like, you know, there should be some magic, um, you know, thing to it, but it, it's just easy. So uh, then you get addicted to mat board. <laughs> all different colors. So uh, 
Let me turn this camera around and see if anybody has any questions. All right, let me take this down. Sorry, sorry. So uh, what do you think, guys? Um, it is affordable. Now, see, if you start with a smaller one, uh, you know, you have to think about the storage because this thing is big. I'm going to turn it around again so you can see. I have it on my kitchen table, but it extends because you want something that can, uh, you know, if you have a big piece that you want to cut, it's got to come way over here so you can trim it down. So, um, you know, you need some room to work on it. This is uh, 40 inches. And then, you know, to store the mat board, that's another thing. Um, I have mine. What I did was I took a table and I, um, two dressers that I had and I put a tabletop on top of that and then I store all my mat cutting accessories and, and uh, blades and all that stuff, uh, you know, in there. And then I put my mat board under it. I raised up the level of the table to store my mat board. So that's how I do it. But if you just need one that you're going to cut, like maybe, you know, an 8x10 or an 11x14, even 16x20, you don't need this whole big thing. You can just get like a, one of the smaller ones, which are, if you want to go over and look at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, they carry them. Logan is the company. I know, Karen, you can't. But just so you know, this is how you do it. Hi, Lena. Hi, Pam. So, um... What we're going to do now today, so today you learned how to cut the mat, and then tomorrow we're going to learn how to do the other parts of the project. Okay, we're going to learn how to do this foiled Noel. So um, if you want to come back tomorrow, you will see the other half of this. And if you want it, you know, I can go over anything if you're interested, but really I was excited when uh, Logan asked me to do a Facebook Live because I've been using this mat cutter for probably 20 something years. And the thing about it is I wanted another one, but it, the other one didn't die. I mean, it is a quality product. I highly recommend it and um, their company is great. And um, I one time did a video for them. It was when the new, um, these Logan uh, Foamworks tools were coming out that work with the, um, the foam board, which I really didn't know a lot about. Uh, <laughs> I went to Las Vegas and I did this video that was at a trade show. I lost my voice, so <laughs> it was very memorable. But it was fun to demo, you know, to the art world because I come from the craft world and it's a little bit different. So uh, I hope that if you are a matter or framer, um, that, you know, you, Think about other ways. I, I like to use Matboard 3D and not necessarily for framing. But the tool here, uh, what what you can do, what I do, is I've got a blade that's like a little exacto blade. So if I wanted, you know, to make a box or something, and that's kind of how I work, you can um, just take your blade and use this as a guide, run it down. So if you need something cut to size, you can just, you know, do it with your mat cutter as a base. So I use it for a lot. Blades are not that expensive and last quite a while. Yes, they do. Yeah. So does anyone have any questions? Does anyone want a mat cutter? <laughs> you can get them online. You can get them, um, like I said, in the stores, they don't have the big ones like this, but you could probably get that in an art supply store like Dick Blick or Jerry's Artorama. You could go online. Um, and you do want to think about what you would use it for and then get a cutter that is, you know, set to the projects that you will be creating. So they have too many models. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to look at them. I did wind up getting this bigger one because it also has on here, and I've all wondered how to cut acrylic, and they have a cutter that will cut acrylic and a glass cutter. So those were features that I always wanted, but um, never had in my last model. So you, 
You want it? All right, it's not too late, Jen. <laughs> he might bring it to you. I don't know. He could send an IOU. You have a laser cutter, Cease. Oh, my Lord. Wow. Wow. Oh, it doesn't do a bevel. Yeah, but still, you can cut a lot of stuff. The model that I'm using, Laura, thank you for repeating that. This is the Logan Sim uh, Simplex Elite 750. So this is a big one. It's not a professional cutter. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's not professional, but it it's pretty close. So, you know, it's not a computerized one or anything, but it's a... Uh, it does the job. It's um, it's really nice. And this one is so clean, I gotta tell you. And this one has a longer edge on it. This My last one had 20 inches, so this one goes to 32. So this is a long uh, stabilizer bar here. I'm not sure what the technical name is, but uh, you, know, you have to think about it when you're gonna put it somewhere. So, uh, but it's pretty handy, except if you tell people that you do it, then everybody you know is like, hey, I have a poster. Can you mat that for me? <laughs> All of my kids, uh, I have been able to do that. When they graduated from college, um, I was able to mat their diplomas. And it is a handy thing to have, I'll tell you. Any kind of, like if you have an old postcard, if you have just things that you like, you could put together shadow boxes and then you can use spacers, you know, to, um, well, this one over here, actually, I did use a spacer. And I just took some, oops, just took some foam board and cut strips of it and placed that under the mat and then this was recessed. So you get some nice depth there. So, Anything else? It sounds ghoulish, but you might kill for a laser cutter. <laughs> Slightly, Laura. <laughs> you have to be willing to rob a bank. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty cool. But, you know, these are pretty handy too. You don't have to have electricity. Uh, <laughs> you can move it around. It doesn't weigh a million pounds. It doesn't cost a million dollars. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it is. Um, it has been a good, good investment. Glad you have. <laughs> oh, see, Anna's going to be down with her project she wants me to cut for her. You know, I don't mind because it's really, it's really easy, and it doesn't strain my brain too much. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I have a pile of stuff that I have to mat for Christmas actually, because I found some old photos that my husband had. Uh, colorized it was of a tractor and so I'm going to be matting that and that's been on the pile for a while but um yeah no electricity I know so anyway this is the Logan mat cutter it is very professional and that's what I like about it I mean you saw what I did and here are those edges now sometimes you could get an overcut which uh let me see if I can zoom in there. Uh, sometimes you have to adjust it a little bit, like I said, um, you know, your bl the mat board, some's thicker, some are thicker than others, so you have to adjust for that a little bit, but, oh good, find the free Logan Border app on Google Play or the App Store, yes. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, so, um, I hope that was a good demo. But, um, you know, I might be doing more of these if you guys are interested and if Logan is interested um, because I'd like to show you some more things that you can do with it. So, again, um, if you would want to like Logan on Facebook, wait a minute, sorry, not, don't mean to make you dizzy, but they have their information right here. Uh, you can go ahead over and like it and, you know, keep track and see what they have going on, see if you get ideas. And um, book binding board, probably too dense. You know, I've tried that, Michelle. Um, it depends. I've got an eight ply cutter, so I think it would work with that. But with the normal four ply, I don't think that would go too well. And it would probably tear up a blade, which not, would not be a big deal. But you could give it a try. Um, I think I have some. If I try it, I'll let you know. I'll put it in the comments. And if anyone has any questions, just um, 
put them in the, the uh, chat and I can find out for you and I will post it again and, and answer when I hear back. Okay. So, do you think it would work with bookbinding board? Yeah, you know what? Let me go see if I can find mine. I think it would. These blades are amazing. They're very sharp and, I mean, board is board. But I, I'll let you know. I'll wreck my thing. <laughs> I have two mat cutters, so if, if one gets messed up, I can use my other one. Better not. <laughs> so, um... If there are no more questions, I just want to say thank you to Logan for giving me the chance to show your amazing products to everybody and um, let me know if you have questions. If you want to come back tomorrow to my page again, Eileen Hall Designs, I'm going to be doing the other half of this project. So uh, we might, you know, just touch on how we did this one, but um, we'll probably be focusing on the other half of the project. But I appreciate you coming and watching, and um, I'll see you next time. Okay? Thanks, everyone. Bye.